Hi Statesman Nation, we are joined today by Aaron Scott, uh, head wrestling coach here at William Penn University. Uh, we're getting ready for the 2019-2020 season. Coach, that's just literally uh, days away, so yes, it is. Um, before we talk about 1920, let's back up and talk about last year, uh, your first uh, full season uh, at the helm, so um, you know, how do you feel like it went? Give us uh, some cliff notes uh, on all. Yeah, I would say that uh, overall we had a um, pretty successful season as um, you know as far as some changes and just growth inside of the program and growth of our wrestlers um, I feel like we made some great strides with uh, some of the culture changes and the mindset and the work ethic um, we really elevated that and you know our, I, I feel like our guys are training at an elite level now uh, more on track with where we want to be as a program and then from a uh, performance standpoint and, and, and competition, you know, I would say that our guys got better every single time they went out. Did we uh, achieve the results we wanted? No, we we want more than that. Yeah. But um, you know, we're, we're proud of the work and the growth that our guys put in. You know, so overall, the the results maybe weren't there, but the the growth and the changes that were made inside of the program, I think right. that was necessary and was kind of our focus. And I think that's going to reap more rewards as we get further into this season and next. Sure. Definitely got to walk before you can run, right? Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the off season, um, especially on the side of recruiting, you know, what type of individuals you're looking for, what holes you were trying to fill, et cetera. Yeah. So I would say this past recruiting class uh, would probably be one of the best that we've had in the last four or five years. So really good recruiting class that we're excited about. You know, we're going to see you know, um, two to three guys starting right away this year that we think are going to have a significant impact on the team. So we're ex excited about that, but yet we still have some talent that um, we're going to redshirt this year. Yep. So just that that level of, of recruiting and elevating the um, talent that we are getting an in incoming mm -hmm. freshman, I feel like we made some significant strides there. And, you know, we have some... Uh, pretty good recruits already lined up maybe for next year so we're working through that so we're, we're excited and I think that um, as you know we get some better results um, then I feel like that's going to help you know help us become more more marketable and yeah. get some of those higher level guys so um, we're, we're definitely training in the right direction there and as far as like off-season training you know I would say that this was again probably our best summer for off-season mm -hmm. training. We had quite a few guys, um, you know, usually double-digit guys in the room, uh, just about every day throughout right. the summer, or our training days and our and our club program. So, sure. um, I would say, you know, we're we're very happy with the past, you know, eight months here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at success breed breeds success. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you get one good year, you can turn that into two good years and better and better. So, yep. all right. Well, what does this uh, team look like? So let's break it down. Starting at one twenty five. Yeah. So one twenty five this year. Um, I think overall as a team, we're going to be a little bit better than mm -hmm. we were last year. We've got some guys coming out of red shirt. Uh, we just have another year of, of experience for yep. those guys, and. Um, at 25, we have uh, Nadello Charles Pierre coming back. Um, he's going to be getting us uh, started off here. Um, you know, he's continued to improve. You know, he was most improved wrestler last year, and he just continues to improve. Um, you know, we're working on uh, on the mat with him a little bit more. We need need to see a little bit more growth. He knows that. Um, but uh, you know, I, I see him to make some more significant gains and to continue to improve. And I think he's going to be a better wrestler this year than he was yeah. last year. Uh, also, we have um, Kirkland Crocker, who's Keontae's older brother. He's going to be in the lineup. I would, I see maybe at 25, maybe at 33. Right. You know, he he's going to fit in there somewhere. Uh, he was he was red shirting last year, so he's gonna he had a, a limited um, competition. So mm -hmm. a lot of these guys, you know, um, haven't seen or been really visible. I think we're gonna be flying under the radar. Sure. You know, I think that we're gonna be better than what people anticipate right, right. now. But I would say maybe by uh, mid season that um, we're gonna see a few more of those guys in the in the rankings. Sure. Which brings us to uh, 133 Darkwell Pierre. Um, he had a 
you know, kind of a breakout season last year. He kind of kind of hit his stride and mm-hmm. was uh, competing consistently at a high level. And um, you know, he has continued to improve, um, and you know, stepped up as a leader. And his work ethic this this preseason, you know, I would say it's been our best preseason mm-hmm. in the last five or six years as far as how hard these guys worked mm-hmm. and. You know, and they stayed energetic and enthusiastic mm-hmm. through the whole process, working hard. You know, us coaches trying to break these guys and make them do things they've never done before. Yeah. So, I, I feel that you know, Darkwell, his mindset's in the right place. He's mm-hmm. been working hard. He's he's pushing everybody. Um, you know, he's currently ranked in the top twenty, and I would right. say out of everybody last year, based on the results, he's the, he's probably the only one that deserves it right now at yeah. this point. Yeah. So everyone else ha- has to kind of earn it, but. I see, you know, him possibly moving moving on up in the rankings and, you know, maybe making some noise here at Nationals. And he's in his last year, so yep, he's, senior he's season. trying to really close yep. out strong. So. Once, once to, yeah, close out strong, go out with a bang there. Yep. Yep. Um, 141, we have a true freshman stepping in. Okay. And uh, Preston Weiss, you know, he's, he's, he's good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we contemplated um, redshirting him, but... He's one of those high-level athletes that we re-recruited in, and he can make an impact right away. Okay. Uh, we kind of talked about him, maybe redshirting him, but we feel that he's he's a top 20 guy, top 10 guy right now, and yeah. we think he can go out there and obviously impact, and we believe that he can do that. And that was um, something, you know, he wants to be, you know, four-time All-American, and we, we feel that he can do that yeah. right now. So that that's why we're, we're putting him out there. We trust him. Mm-hmm. Um, 149, we have Joe Eads. You know, he's coming off a, of a redshirt year as well. Limited um, competition schedule last year. You know, again, I think he's coming in under the radar. You know, he had uh, surgery on his uh, uh, forearm, broke his forearm at the end of uh, 2018 season, yeah. broke his hand at the beginning of uh, last year, a year ago. Um, so we decided to redshirt him. So. Limited competition, hasn't really been seen much, but when he did go out there, you know, took uh, uh, fourth at the Missouri Valley Open and uh, second at Central Open. So he's another guy I think that's going to be flying under the radar right, right. now. He's uh, he's a pinner. He can pin guys. He can uh, score some points for the team. So we're pretty excited about that um, and uh, what what Joe has. So. Yeah. One, Keep going. Yeah, take, one, take a breath if you want. <laughs> 157, we have uh, Dennis Simmons returning. You know, he's, uh, you know, another year's growth. Right. And, uh, you know, he's he's uh, finishing off his senior season as well. And, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's he's been improving. You know, we're biggest thing with Dennis is, you know, we're working on his mindset and keeping him in the right frame of mind right. throughout the entire season. It's hard. Um, you know, that your your confidence is challenged and, um, you know, it, it's hard. We have, you know, we have a pretty tough practice room mm-hmm. and tough competition. So keeping him uh, focused on what he can do and positive is, is the biggest thing. And he's made some improvements there. We're also improving him technique-wise, uh, finishing his shots. Positioning is really big for Dennis, you know, making sure he doesn't get out of position and give, yeah. up, give up some points there, sure. uh, little mistakes. So just staying... Uh, disciplined in positions. 165, we have a uh, freshman coming out of red shirt, Makai White. Mm-hmm. Again, didn't see a lot of competition last year. Um, you know, he was at 174 last year, got him down to 165. I think he's um, he's looking pretty good right now. And, uh, you know, he's made made a lot of growth and keeping, keeping him healthy, keeping him in the right mindset, believing yeah. that confidence. And also, uh, maybe splitting some of that time, maybe Darwin Diaz. We're starting him out at 174 right now. He's filling that 174 pound mm-hmm. hole that we have. Uh, Red shirt freshman too. Uh, he came in January, so he's had you know just one semester with us. Yeah. But um, you know we're we're excited about his potential and what he has to offer. Getting making some improvements again. A lot of these guys are just fundamentally um, and just improving the mindset and been working hard 184 we have Jason Beebe Mm -hmm. he's coming out of red shirt you know so he had limited uh, uh, competition last year you know battling some injuries with with knees and some sickness Uh, so again I think he's gonna be flying under the radar 
Um, and he had a pretty successful, him and Joe both had pretty successful years two years ago, so they're not, it's not like they're too far under the nope. radar. I mean, people shouldn't be too surprised if they come out and have, have a good year. Yeah, yeah, and Jason, you know, he was, the the end of his freshman year, he was really coming on and wrestling yeah. some of the uh, top guys tough mm -hmm. at the uh, regional tournament. You know, I think, I think Jason had wrestled every guy in the top 10, you know, yeah. at some point his freshman year. So he's, he's wrestled some of the best guys and he's, um, you know, had done very well. So yeah. I think he's coming back in, you know, gonna, gonna fill some holes and solidify uh, the lineup there. Um, another red shirt coming in at 197. Uh, we have Matthew Landsberger, mm -hmm. uh, knee injury um, last year. So again, limited uh, competition hasn't been seen a lot. I think that, you know, getting him down to weight and uh, keeping him healthy, uh, we're, we're excited with what he's gonna be able to do for us. And then probably in the second semester, Sheldon Rodriguez will be joining the lineup. Sure. You know, I think, you know, he's, this is the best that Sheldon's been looking and, you know, the hardest that he's been working, his mind's in the right place. Yep. Uh, you know, I really see that him also, you know, he improved a lot last year and this summer he's been here training and working hard. Um, you know, I really do believe that he's going to make some noise for us as well. And then we have a true freshman at heavyweight uh, in Maxwell Diaz. You know, we're excited, the potential that he has. Um, you know, another high level athlete that we, you know, that we, we were able to recruit in wrestled at some, you know, some of the biggest tournaments um, in, in the country. So he's not a stranger to that yeah, pressure right. and um, the that stage. So we're excited what he's going to be able to uh, step in and do for the team at heavyweight. So uh, we have, you know, I feel like we're a better team this year. A lot of those guys are going to be flying on the radar just coming out of red shirt, limited competition. Yeah. But we're, we're excited and I think that we're just going to continue to grow and get better as the as the year goes on. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of young kids in that lineup, as you first you know, mentioned mm -hmm. right, on, right away. Um, but also, you know, several individuals like you know uh, Darkwell or Sheldon or um, uh, Den Simmons. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then a bunch of guys are redshirted too that have experience. How important is it for those guys? How important has it been also for those guys early on to uh, serve as leaders? Um, you know, in the first few weeks, and you know, even if for guys that maybe. You know, showed up early and, and did some stuff in the summer. How, how impactful have they been to your program? Not just you coaches having to to show the show the way. Yeah, I, I think they've had a profound impact on the <coughs> on the team and the in the culture. Uh, I think it's important, and I think that's what we've kind of also been working on developing for the past eight months and working with these upperclassmen is develop developing them into leaders. I think right. that's something that you know that we have maybe lacked in our program. And these guys have really, really stepped up. And, you know, I, I think those those culture changes, you know, we, us coaches can kind of set what we want that culture to look like. But I think those changes come from the inside out. And right. I think it's done um, within the team, not by us. So really getting our leaders to buy into that and, you know, uh, and hold each other accountable and, you know, when, you know they've done a really good job of keeping keeping the team um, motivated and on track. You know it's very easy to, to become complacent and lazy. Right. Um, you know, like I said, we had a pretty pretty good uh, preseason and working really hard. You know those leaders were up there and they were they were setting the pace, holding guys accountable, and uh, really leading by example as well. So you know, I mean, they were they were doing a really good job. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's uh, switch over and talk about the schedule. Um, relatively the same as what we've had in the past. Obviously, I've got quite a few duels uh, mixed in with tournaments, and obviously, you got to face everybody in the heart. Mm -hmm. And the heart has added uh, another team with Central Methodist, um, yep. adding uh, men's wrestling as well. So, um, you know, how's the schedule look? What are some of the highlights? Yeah, I would say uh, we overall we have a pretty pretty good schedule. Um, you know, it's close to the same that we've had in, in years past, you know, so we don't want to fix something that's not broken. Sure. Uh, we are looking at, you know, maybe branching out and seeing some different competition. You know, one thing that we added this year was the Valley Duels at Missouri Valley. We're going to get out there and see, get a couple more matches before Christmas. Right. Allows, allow us to train and get, get a few more matches in before we take that winter break. So yeah. I think that'll be big. 
<clears throat> and then we can see some some other teams which will help us with our rankings but uh, another change is our, our first duel of the year is against Central College in, in Pella um, typically we wrestle them towards the end right end of the season this year it's at the beginning you know so I think that that's really uh, exciting you know for us to kind of have you know uh, a close close home duel right away and uh, get things started a little bit earlier yeah. um, it just helps us to another chance to, to get down to weight to compete yeah. and uh, before and then we have Waldorf uh, a, a conference uh, opponent you know having that additional duel just gives us a couple more matches to knock off before we go to the uh, Grandview Open yeah. which is it's becoming a pretty tough tournament. You right. know, there's a lot of of the best NAIA teams there, so it allows our guys. You know, we want to be looking really good and feeling good. Yeah. You know, for our varsity guys going into that tournament, there's a lot of ranking implications and right. national qualifying implications there. So, um, you know, that that's right out of the you know right out of the gate here in the next uh, ten days. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, then we'll go to the Augsburg Open. Uh, see some different competition there. See some some D threes, and I guess everywhere we go, we see a little bit of uh, all the different divisions. Right. Um, and then we'll, we'll round that off with the the Simpson Invitational at the beginning. We'll have we'll duel Baker before that, and we'll have the Simpson, yep. and then we'll have the Valley duels, and that'll kind of round out the first half of our season there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, just uh, putting a bow on this whole thing. You got to, we talk about tons of other things, but mm -hmm. you have you have more important things to do than sitting down with me, right. getting ready to, for the season. But putting a bow on the whole thing, um, what's it going to take for this team to achieve the goals, and for that matter, even get past the goals that you guys have set? Yeah, I think it's it's going to be uh, continued effort. Um, that's that's one thing that we're really big on is that we want 100% effort every time right. our our guys do something. So. Just maintaining that effort, giving giving the, the the best that they can, whenever you know whether they're in the weight room, whether they're in the practice room, 100% effort and uh, continuing to improve our mind. You know yeah. we, we've you know we're pretty intentional about that, and you know we're getting better. Uh, but wrestling being such a mental sport, you know the it, it plays a significant part, and I think that's something that a lot of these guys. Have really lacked up to this point sure. is their their uh, mindset and their mental training. So we're going to continue to improve on that, the the effort and just continuing that that culture and uh, that positive, grateful environment. Yeah. You know, so as long as we continue to do that, we look to get better every day. You know, our guy, you know, and give that effort, we're going to be able to do what we want to do, and our sure. guys are going to have a fun season. That's fun. Awesome. All right, once again, uh, Coach Aaron Scott of the men's wrestling program will be adding women's wrestling next year, so we've uh, got to share that weight room a little bit. Yep. Um, they will begin the uh, season on Thursday against Central uh, over in Pella in a duel. <clears throat> once again, then next weekend, uh, it'll be uh, Grandview open for the first uh, tournament of the year. So best of luck, Coach. Uh, everything uh, William Penn Wrestling, everything William Penn Athletics in general, statesmanathletics.com. Thanks.